You are living through a global traumatic event. And the reason you're doing seemingly unimportant tasks right now is because you're living through a global traumatic event. And you don't have to be productive and you don't have to do the thing. You might need to just sit down and color. And that is okay. That is self-care. Self-care counts. There's no such thing as an unmeaningful task. So if you feel like you're doing something that's not meaningful, it probably means you need to recover. And that task actually is meaningful in your recovery. It just might not be the most effective manner of recovery. ADHD Rewired, episode 321. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we mention on today's show you can support us on patreon sign up for our email newsletter you can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups and you can learn all about our intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups you can do all of this at our website adhdrewired.com we know that starting is the hardest part so let's get started Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. We are here with our monthly live Q&A. We have, as usual, Brendan Mahan. Hey, Brendan. How's it going? It's going. It is going. And we have Will Curb. Good to be here. It is good that you are here. We are, we are all here, but we might not all be there. We are now, are we like a month into COVID? Yeah. yeah. So I... I think the my school's closed down the day after our last live Q and A. Time is a is a weird conceptual idea at this, this point. This is week five for me because mm-hmm. COVID hit. COVID hit at the same time that I launched the parent coaching groups, and I am in week five of the coaching groups. So, <laughs> week five. <laughs> yeah, you know it's interesting because we just started our uh, our. Uh, 20th season of, of coaching groups and when people signed up like COVID wasn't really a thing that like was affecting anybody so um, you know fortunately a lot of people are working from home and we're working from home even before so it hasn't affected everyone that much uh, but it's definitely has and definitely in our alumni community and, and, and Facebook and just in the general ADHD community it's definitely has uh, been um, having a, a big impact you know I'm I'm hopeful but also unsure if by the time this podcast comes out, if the whole like quarantine thing is going to be like, oh man, thank God that's over. But I'm not sure. It might still be going on. Yeah. So can I share my my mildly hopeful perspective on please. ADHD and, co- and COVID? Mm-hmm. This is my perspective on ADHD and COVID that is positive, right? Because we can talk all day about how like everything is weird and everything is harder and all that stuff. I'm not going to argue on you that I don't want to sound like I'm belittling anyone who is struggling right now. That's not what I mean. But uh, part of the challenge of COVID is that the expectations are unclear and things are uncertain and we're on shifting sands, right? Ladies and gentlemen of the ADHD community, um, we are almost always uncertain about what the expectations are and on shifting sands, (laughs) So we're in some ways kind of built for this, <laughs> <laughs> like the discounting the executive functioning part and like schedules being thrown off and all that stuff. There is a layer for me at least where I'm like, oh, it's like constantly crisis mode. And uh, that's kind of where I used to live all the time before I learned how to plan stuff. So I remember this. It does seem though that the one of the challenges is is that the our options of how to respond to this crisis are limited, and which mm-hmm. is what makes it so hard. Right. Um, and I was talking this morning in uh, in our uh, alumni session that um, sometimes it kind of feels like I'm getting whiplash from like feeling like all right, I'm feeling hopeful and optimistic to being like I uh, feel like I'm barely functioning, and like that was all about like 
you know, before 1030 this morning. Right. So it's it, you know, my exercise routine is off. It is out the window. I, I'm not exercising. Um, you know, I was, I was like playing pickleball against the wall in my office. Um, yeah, but that's lost its novelty and I'm having a hard time doing that. Even though like, I keep wearing shorts under my pants, like into the office with the intention of sweating. <laughs> um, that's, I yeah. imagine wearing shorts under your pants would make you sweat. <laughs> But, you know, it's, I mean, when I move, when I do anything that moves around for more than a minute, I sweat and then it takes me like an hour to cool off. Um, that's just how I, I'm <laughs> built. Um, but no, it is, it, you know, I, I asked, uh, the group this morning, um, you know, to sort of looking at this through the lens of radical acceptance and being that this is our normal right now. So what is it that we can do to thrive, not just survive, but to thrive? Because I think if we focus on trying to just survive, we may fall short. But if we focus on thriving and we don't quite get there, we'll at least hopefully get past the, the surviving threshold. Um, so for, for- And also, like, I, I'm with you, but there's also a layer of like memes of ridiculous expectations and guilt floating around there. So I don't yep. want to not take a chance to poke in there for yep. a second. You don't need to learn Chinese. Yeah. You don't need to pick up a new hobby. If you don't pick up a new hobby right now, that doesn't mean that you, that your excuse about not having the time is the reason why you just didn't care or whatever nonsense. The meme says, ladies and gentlemen, this is a traumatic experience for the entire world. We're yes. all living through, through a trauma. Yes. And there is such a thing as post-traumatic growth, which is what Eric's talking about here. And sometimes post-traumatic growth is I made it through and I still feel okay about myself, the universe and everybody else. That's still post-traumatic growth. And that it's, if that's what you got, that's what you got. And if you learn Chinese, fantastic. Good job. Way to learn Chinese. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to point out um, if you're a parent, then the expectations are different. Like there's a lot of people out there who are 20, 25 years old, don't have kids, have limited responsibilities who are like, apparently killing it and doing all kinds of cool stuff because they don't have anything else to do. But if you're a parent, you've got kids to navigate. You've got maybe a spouse to navigate. You've got a real career that you're trying to keep on the tracks. All of that stuff makes it harder. Yes. Yeah. Will, what's, uh, what's been your kind of experience? I mean, it's, yeah, I just remember like seeing some of those meetings and be like, I, I have less time now. Mm -hmm. This is... <laughs> Well, you know, and yeah. I, I know that for me and every, um, you know, during the year, uh, in between coaching seasons, I always have th three weeks where I, you know, I have nine hours of typically scheduled stuff that is not happening. So like those are my anchors for the, the week. And those three weeks that occur three times a year in between seasons are a struggle for me. And so Right now, so many people's lives have turned into that unstructured time. You know, that, that idea of like, if you want something done, give it to a busy person, right? Like right now we are painfully not busy for a lot of us, which is really, really hard. Well, we also haven't, a lot of us haven't like gone like, Hey, let's reassess our goals for this time because where they were like, we're just kind of going in panic mode and being going like, okay, this is what we're going to do. And then it's like, but in the back of our head, we're also saying, I still want to do, you know, A, B, and C, even if the A, B, and C isn't reasonable to do anymore. Uh, so like, there's like, you know, I look at my calendar, I'm like, there's these things I just can't do. I have to be like, okay, that's not part of my goals for this quarter. This probably not this year. Yeah, I had uh, one of my goals which I had last year, which I, why I uh, extended to this year as well, was to uh, see um, at least a dozen live shows. That's not happening. <gasps> I have an update. Yes. For those of you who have been here for a very long time, <laughs> the Jurassic Park <laughs> event <laughs> that I bought tickets for a full year in advance was canceled due to COVID <laughs> and it should have happened like last week, <laughs> but we didn't get to go. <laughs> um, all right. Let's, uh, should we answer some questions here? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's see how, uh, you know, none of us are, our EF is at where we would like it to be and that's all right. So let's see how we do here. All right. Um, have you picked out a favorite question? I got one. Okay. 
go for it. Because I'm picking it because I accidentally dismissed it. Because <laughs> I went to click the dismiss button and then someone posed a new question and everything moved. So when I clicked it, it went away. So I want to make sure we get to it. This is from Andrea. Do any of you guys have a mantra or a saying that you say to get yourself motivated or to help push you into action? Starting is the hardest part. So let's get started. Um, no, and, and so often if, if what my, if I'm stuck, often the first thing that I have to tell myself is stand up. Right. I think about what is my, what is the smallest thing my body needs to do in order to move towards that thing. Um, I'd sometimes do the, when I feel like if I'm doing a dreaded task and I feel like quitting after the first minute, um, I summon my inner Dory and I go, just keep swimming, just keep going, just keep going, you know, like, and just to put one step in front of the other. What, what about you guys? Uh, I've got one of just like, how could this be easier? Because then that kind of gives me like, oh, if I did this, then I wouldn't have to do these steps and stuff, you know, or, you know, like, um, it kind of, <laughs> sometimes it gets me going off in a slightly the wrong direction, but still like doing what I need to do where I'm like, oh, if I made like a kind of a template for this, then every time I do this, it would be easier. Uh, and so just like, kind of helps me find those first steps. Because I think, I, I don't go with the eat the frog strategy most of the time. I usually go with the building momentum. Mm-hmm. For those who don't know, the eat the frog is the doing the hard thing first because then after you do that, everything seems easier. All right. And so yeah, I'm not a fan of that one. No. Yeah, and, no, and there's no the and, easy thing first. Get momentum. I'm with our, I'm with Will. And each person is is different, right? It's mm-hmm. in experiment. So if if you're sort of new to the whole world of ADHD and productivity strategies. Try both ways. See what what um, works for you. Um, I've got. I tend to go um, keep moving forward. That's one. When it's really hard, when stuff's really hard, that's the where I tend to default to. Um, I also often wonder what resources do I have available to help me get this done. And I think of resources fairly broadly, everything from people to websites to stuff like that. Um, and then the other two that I fall to one is left over from high school, but still creeps up every now and then, which is never underestimate the power of the B because my nickname in high school was B. <laughs> um, and then every now and then if I'm just really aggravated with myself, I'll start thinking, if you want to be worthy of your black belt, you got to do this. It doesn't even matter if it's martial arts related or physical related. It's just like a mentality thing. So I was wondering if too. we can uh, um, do a little crowdsourcing here. If people want to use the chat and say if they have a mantra that they use, uh, throw that in the chat and we can share uh, some of those. Um, but yeah, self-talk strategies can be very, very helpful. Um, and a great thing with self-talk, if you do it out loud, it reinforces it uh, in mentally in a different way than mm-hmm. just be like thinking like, mm, what if I do this? If you like, you don't even have to say it like loudly out loud. You can just like kind of like whisper it to yourself like, you know, um, which is a thing I picked up from what's his name? He wrote uh, uh, Year of Living Biblically and uh, AJ, AJ Jacobs. Yep, AJ. Yeah, in his, he was talking With about our that powers his combined. We have one yeah. brain. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was writing about like in his, he wrote a book on gratitude. And he talked about, yeah, using, doing gratitude out loud rather than just writing it down. He found that it was like so much more powerful than I like, kind of picked up in some ways. And I'm like, this is. Yeah, it's just saying these things out loud. Well, Barkley talks about in his book, uh, Taking Charge of Adult ADHD. Um, he first says, see the future, then say the future. And he talks about actually saying the thing out loud because it actually it taps into different neural networks when we are actually speaking versus just thinking. Um, let's, let me just share a couple of the, uh, the mantras people are putting in the chat. Uh, um, I can do hard things. Um, oh, someone from my last season of coaching groups added the, such a beautiful addition to this that I wanted to share Um, because we can do hard things, but we don't have to do them in the hardest way possible. And 
I freaking mm. loved it. Like that's like that nice. became my new like it was awesome. Um, see, I can do this. Um, MJ says, "What is one thing that I can do that is in my control right now? Um, now that you don't have to be perfect, you could be good. Um, um, also, imagine how good it will feel once completed. Uh, work smarter, not harder. Um, uh, I would almost take it one step further and say I can." I'll just insert the activity here. Um, how would I feel having done this? Then visit that feeling for a moment. That, that's a great strategy right there. Really try to uh, um, uh, identify and sit with that feeling. Um, uh, shitty first draft. Um, uh, yeah, is there some really, uh, oh, it's okay to ask for help. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. It is okay to ask for help. Uh, get good. I'll get great at good enough. Yep. I accept myself unconditionally. Um, let's see. A deep breathe, pause, start now. Pro uh, it is progress, not perfection. So those are some uh, bite size yeah. snacks of inspiration. Another good thing. Another thing I realized that I do as I'm thinking about this is when I was in like tail end of middle school, beginning of high school i had my best friend his name was bobby and bobby was like super competitive but a wicked positive cheerleader guy so like anytime we struggled with anything it didn't matter what it was it could be basketball it could be like homework bobby would start going no nah, b you got this come on you got this and that still plays in my head when i'm struggling and i'm only just now realizing that it, it's bobby's voice that's saying it to me when i hit that struggling point so if you've got someone who cheered you on and it really became a core part of who you are as a result, try to channel that person and see where that goes. All right. Let's, uh, let's take another question. Let's go, um, uh, Ritalin. So, uh, Calvin asks about, uh, Ritalin has hair loss side effects. No, we all just shaved our heads. That's all. That's. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. Um, I don't think so. I've Come never. On, Sarda. <laughs> I've never. I've never heard that before. Um, it's a new one on me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, correlation isn't causation here. I mean, that's. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, if you heard uh, Will's podcast from last week. Plus, if that was a thing, like there'd be a whole bunch of bald kids running around. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> oh, I don't know why that was funnier in my mind than it probably should have been. Um, okay. So, and then how does a cardiologist judge if my heart is fit for Ritalin? I'm going to answer this in the way that I answer many, many, many ADHD medication questions. Um, I am not a doctor, nor am I a pharmacist so i am not qualified to answer this question they will take a um do a um i always for like my my acronyms of tests ekg eeg e mm -hmm. yeah the one that EKG. like i every time i go and get get one of these done i'm like they put a man on the moon but they can't figure out how to strap those things off without pulling all my body hair off god um and i think the nurse has a little bit of enjoyment like after they put because there's like 10 of them that are attached to my body hair and it's painful today's podcast is brought to you by tangents we have <laughs> lots of them <laughs> um i should do a podcast of just all fake ads or like just i think that would be a, a thing we could do that yeah i'm with you <laughs> Someone get me out of this rabbit hole. <laughs> so uh, I'm an adult with ADHD in. diagnosed as an adult. I think my son has it, but nobody else in his life thinks so. Should I trust my ADHD parent gut and make a doctor's appointment? Yes. Yeah. What's it going to hurt? I mean, you know, controlling for COVID-19 and going to the doctor's office. Um, it, unless like you're going to cause a massive conflict by taking your kid to the doctors like if your husband or wife is going to be like no and that's going to be a horrible nightmare then 
maybe consider that into the equation a little bit and maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. The people but, that are saying like, no, he's quote unquote fine. Um, just consider who they are. Are they doctors? Are they therapists? Um, are they specialists in ADHD? Um, cause I think that when it comes to, to non expert opinions, opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, got my daughter diagnosed recently um, where we just, you know, like, Hey, it runs in, it has, you know, some genetic component. We should just get this checked out. You know, she does have some signs of it and let's, you know, like they had us fill out a form. They had her teacher fill out a form and the doctor was like, yeah, that's uh, pretty conclusive. So (laughs) it was, and it's everything I've heard from everyone that. I've heard getting diagnosed later in life was like, I just wish I had known earlier on. (laughs) Yep. How things would have been different. Thoughts on sluggish cognitive tempo. Uh, Sleep issues is the first thing that pops into my mind. (laughs) So sluggish cognitive tempo has been in some of the literature for a good 30 years now, but it has just recently gotten more in the last couple of years has gotten more um uh more of a look uh around it uh, a couple of years ago i was at a session where uh barkley was sort of um uh pulling apart you know the differences and overlap between inattentive adhd and sluggish cognitive tempo and and was able to um in a way that i am not going to even come close to eloquently uh uh describing it was able to to show statistically why it really is its own separate disorder um one of the things that they looked at was um the response to medication um um another thing they looked at was uh the the um sort of consistency and that in uh sluggish cognitive tempo there is a a consistency in how the the symptoms sort of present itself whereas in ADHD um there's we know that that inconsistency is a hallmark of uh, of this disorder um the it did not respond well to most of the medications that that uh um when they were able to isolate and diagnose SCT um by itself um so there is a a large um uh if you have ADHD particularly the inattentive type uh um that you may also meet the criteria for SCT um but it didn't go both ways. So it was, um, you know, so the, one of the things that, um, I, that I remember reading about in, in about sluggish cognitive tempo, um, that I thought was really sort of just interesting because it is a symptom that I've had my entire life and it's staring like this, like fixed stare into like off to the, you know, you're staring at nothing and you can't kind of break the gaze. Like I have had, I, when I first just like read that as in the description of SCT, it's like that describes me so much and for so long of my life. Um, and my mom used to say, you would rather just stare at the walls and, you know, get things done, you know, get your homework done or whatever it was. I'm like, uh huh. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's a slow arousal. Um, it doesn't mean that you're not intelligent. It's just more of an activation, uh, uh, issue um it is not widely so accepted not like an ari tuckman arousal not right <laughs> <laughs> ari, ari tuckman talks a lot about sex and adhd um <laughs> more of a a dopamine like your brain's activating and where it goes from thought i need to do something to action i'm getting up to do the thing so um yeah so there's a lot of overlap i think it's interesting um from a treatment perspective, because it's possible that you're looking at, um, something that if maybe you're not having a good treatment response after trying a lot of different medications, maybe there is SCT, but that's not in the DSM. So that's also another sort of, uh, um, confounding variable for, for treatment. Um, but I think anything that we can do to help understand our, the experience of our lives, I think is helpful. Got another question. Um, how do you stop and actually take a break or switch jobs when hyperfocus takes hold? I like the theory of Pomodoro's dot, 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 <laughs> lips. 
Should we use that as a a, a cue to Take go a into a commercial break? I think we should. We should. All right. We will answer that question when we come back. Dot, dot, dot. Here we are. This is our new normal. A lot of us have changed the way we work and where we work. We are learning how to connect virtually. We are wearing masks. And sometimes it can be a struggle to find a space just for ourselves to breathe, to think, and to grow. When I opened the alumni membership community for our coaching group grads two years ago, I never imagined how much of a lifeline that community would turn out to be for so many of our members. And if you've been a member of one of our coaching groups, we're here for you. Just send an email to support at ADHDrewired.com with the subject line alumni, and we'll send you a link where you can join us in the membership community for one month free. Since 2014, we've been building online communities that are safe spaces for adults with ADHD to learn and to grow and to connect. People like you and me are working together to support each other to live the best life we can living with ADHD. Whether you're new to the podcast or even listening for years, we really are here for you and we really do understand what you're going through. Having ADHD can be a struggle. ADHD Rewired's coaching and accountability groups are here to lessen that struggle. We meet three times a week for 10 weeks and there is support available after those 10 weeks when you join our membership community. So many people who have signed up for these groups tell me that they thought about joining for years and so many have also said they wish they hadn't waited so long. Go to coachingrewired.com and click on the big blue button. We are sending out a save the date email this week for our registration kickoff event on May 28th. This event is by invitation only. Come experience the power of ADHD Rewired Coaching. Because here, you belong. The extreme accountability of this group and the possibility of continued support after the program appealed to me. I had no idea I would come to appreciate and care about and rely on a group of 14 strangers like I did. The structure was just right, and the moments where we went beyond the structure and the boundaries were just as great. If you're thinking about joining this group, don't hesitate. Whatever big or small thing you come looking for, you will leave with so much more. You will leave with more than skills, but with strength. This has changed my life in so many ways. I can't even capture that in words. The piece of group that I did not expect was the relationships I built and the emotional support I received. This group is so much more than learning a bunch of new productivity tools. It really is a community of like people who are there to support and help each other. Before this group, I felt lost, really. But now I am on a totally new trajectory and I like where I'm headed. If you're thinking about joining this group, you are looking for friendship, understanding, and interaction with a group that will see you in a way you probably have not been seen before and some compassionate ass kicking, you're in the right place. My biggest takeaway was that being in a community where we learn, struggle, and make mistakes together works so well for all of us. This group is like a boot camp for people who refuse to let go of their dreams because of their neurodiversity. Go to coachingrewired.com and click on the big blue button to get invited to our registration kickoff event. Our coaching groups do fill up fast, so don't wait. Learn more and get your invitation to our registration event at coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. All right, we are back. Um, my brain just kept thinking about, all right, what fake ad can I just come up with right now? And then I was just distracted by all of those thoughts. <laughs> I feel like Will was thinking of one too. Take prescription distraction. Side effects include, huh? What? And what do you mean? <laughs> that was good. All right. Uh, let's answer another question. We were on the uh, question from Sarah. How do you stop and actually take a break or switch jobs when hyper, hyper focus takes hold? I like the theory of Pomodoros. 
But thank thank God that that you you were here too because I totally forgot that we did a dot 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 from that <laughs> one. All right, I was with you. <laughs> I'll tell you all with our powers combined. All right, who wants it? Well, I will say one thing that I found about Pomodoros is I do not do well with working in the twenty five minute increments. I do well working in like fifty minute increments or Five-o. you know, yeah, do longer increments, but. Because when I try and do Pomodoros, I get, get up and I get distracted or I'd like, I want to work through it because I'm finally in the groove of working. If I do a longer session with planned breaks, it works better. And also a um, great way to make sure you take breaks, drink lots of water. You will need to pee. You will need to get up. <laughs> it's doing that little water clock thing is great. <laughs> yeah. Also, like if you're doing a Pomodoro for say 25 minutes and you hit, hyperfocus or maybe even flow there's no rule that says you have to take a break like maybe you're just being productive and you do some deep work for a few hours and if that's not going to cause any problems then it, how much does it matter so that's that's a piece of this um but if you need to shift out of hyperfocus because of a reason like you've got to feed your kids or something that's that's a different animal. Like if you have a meeting that you're not, you're late to because you didn't come out of hyper-focus that matters. But I don't know that you necessarily have to take a break if you're rocking along. I think it's important to, to do sort of sparse out the differences between flow and hyper-focus because there's, there, you know, there's a lot of similarity to it, but I think one of the big differences is hyper-focus. There is an awareness of needing to shift and an inability to do so. Um, And I think that the, why, um, Pomodoros can be effective even when in the flow is because our brain can get so locked into stuff. And then we, you know, instead of seeing the forest from the, the trees and while we're working on something, we are like, we get into this, this sort of scope where we are like looking at the bark of a tree with a magnifying glass. If we don't sort of just take a few minutes to like step away from what we're working on. And then coming back to it, um, it and breaks can literally be like, all right, I'm going to take a break to empty the garbage and then I'm going to come back to work. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I really discourage people from actually getting involved in something during those five minute Pomodoro breaks. Um, but I think the, the actual like 25 minute, um, uh, I literally just got distracted by a squirrel outside my window. It happens all the time. Like it's, it's. You're such a cliche. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm like a bad meme here. I mean, it's. <laughs> and will sometimes I, I did I ever tell you that I saw a uh, a um, a squirrel jump onto my screen with a scone in its mouth that it pulled out from the, the trash can. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was like, man, I couldn't get my camera fast enough because that was amazing. My favorite wildlife moment was I was doing a workshop. And it, I hit like a good pause moment where everyone's quiet and sort of taking in what I said thing. And in the background, <laughs> <laughs> there are literal crickets in the bed. I was like, oh, man. Oh, That's man. It's a video on YouTube. <laughs> I am. My ADHD is raging right now. I just want to just want to say that it is. It is. Uh, so I like to say double OC out of control. I mean, I am resistant because you like you said squirrel. I'm like, oh, I saw a squirrel yesterday. I took a picture of it. It was great. I'm like, don't don't take out your phone. <laughs> so flow versus hyper focus. <laughs> oh God. Uh, this is the Q and A uh, COVID edition. Um, it's a COVID. We, we've got like, the mental COVID. Is that a thing? I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Just silly. All right. So yeah, um, being variable on the time, I mean, like with all strategies, experiment. Like if you're experimenting with, with stuff and it's not working, then try another experiment. You know, the, the 25 minute rule is not a hard, fast rule. Some people do 15, some people do 50, right? Um, I know for me, when I do, uh, Pomodoros, I can go about, Somewhere between four to six Pomodoros. So in the traditional Pomodoro sense, it's, you know, four Pomodoros with 25 minutes and a five minute break. And then you take a longer uh, after the fourth one, you take a longer uh, break. Um, usually after about the sixth Pomodoro, I start getting sort of lock into hyper focus. I hear the alar- like that alarm go off for the next break. And I'm like, what alarm? I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Alarm? What? So. And, and also like 
you can do it. You don't have to do a Pomodoro with like a Pomodoro timer, right? Like you can do a Pomodoro with an Alexa or something and make your alarm ridiculously obnoxious. Cause that helps me pull out of hyper-focus when I've got something ridiculously obnoxious happening, or especially if I, to, if I have to go somewhere else to make the thing be quiet, like that helps me get out of the state of hyper-focus. So I just thought of an idea. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the, the idea that some people will set a, uh, their coffee pot, like timer as like a, a, to get out of bed and like, but their pot isn't under the, the, uh, coffee, coffee machine, maker, yeah. right? So what if you sort of combine some of these ideas and, you know, also use hydration? So let's say maybe it was tea or decaf coffee. So you weren't just like every 45 minutes having a cup of coffee. Um, sort of do that where you have to go put your cup under the, the coffee pot or something and you're having a, a fresh cup of tea or something that's sort of automated that you have to get up or something is going to happen. And if you do get up, you're actually being rewarded with a nice beverage. Even better is you're going to have to wait for that beverage to pour into the cup or into the mug or something. And that'll hopefully help you disconnect a little bit from what you were doing. Yeah. Like if you make the rule for yourself that like, I'm going to stand here until this is done. You're not just going to drop the cup and run back to your computer or whatever. We have a lot of questions. I just scroll through the question uh, queue. I was like, wow, those are those lots Lightning of Lightning round. <laughs> All right. Pomodoro thing that's fun, though. Yes. You can make a playlist that's like 25 minutes long, mm. and then the five minutes that changes the genre. So if you're like listening to uh, something upbeat, then it goes into a calm music. It'll naturally pull you out of your workflow. Like a Calmodoro. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by... Bad dad jokes. This is how I roll. E Y E roll. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> Next question. I want to use this interim time to take a Coursera course, but I'm struggling with zero structure. Tips? Thoughts? Um, you can create your own structure if that is a thing that you are able to do, like Book it in your calendar, set reminders, set timers, use the Pomodoro technique, but don't get trapped in it. Ask on for Facebook, like, hey, do anyone want to take this course with me? Because mm -hmm. then if you have someone taking it with you, you're like, hey, I want to like do X amount of work by Friday, and then we'll meet up and talk about what we learned in the course. Also, um, if you share your screen on Zoom, you can share your audio as well. So the two of you could take the course. One of you could hop on Zoom, share their screen and their audio, and you can take the course together over Zoom. Quick pro tip if it is your Zoom account, because now Zoom is disabling share screen. You have to make the person you're sharing that you're having the meeting with a co-host that will allow them to share the screen. Hmm. Yeah. That could mess up my coaching groups. <laughs> I share my screen a lot during the coaching group. No, you could share your screen. It's when somebody else wants to share their screen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. You can always take back the uh, the co-host role as well. All right, next, uh, next, and, and Vanessa, you could also use the um, uh, alumni community as well. So I like, I do like the idea of seeing who else wants to take the course with you. I think that's a really, really powerful idea. Yeah, and body double your work. Like even if someone's doing something different, you adult can still study do the hall. Yeah, adult study hall. It. All right, next question. Do you have a favorite recommended fully integrated ADHD life management apps? Fully integrated equals calendar, hierarch hierarchical project, to-do lists, flexible structure. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh, no, ooh, ooh. I don't. Yeah, no, I don't. I use Notion for that, but I have not been able to open it at all. The, my EF has completely failed me while I was during this for <laughs> keeping up with that. Yeah, so there is no perfect app. Uh, sorry, um, it will never be created because even if it is, you're going to get bored of it after a while or they're going to stop updating it or just something about it. So look for function over like form. You know, it's you need a calendar. You need you need something to capture your tasks. Um, but there is, you know, I think that some it's sort of like the idea of a washer and dryer in one. Yes, they exist. And in theory, it's amazing. But in practice, like they're awful. I've read all the reviews because I just think it's a really like I I want one. 
except when after I read the reviews, they say, nope, this is a bad idea. Um, they don't work very well. Cool. Yep. Sorry. I wish I could give you better news. <laughs> How do you determine what is the most important thing you need to do that day rather than bouncing around from one little, usually unmeaningful task to another? Um, I roll a die. That seems unlikely. Sometimes, sometimes. No, I mean, sometimes. Uh, like when, when you're like, because I know I have been in the like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I, like something is better than nothing. If you were spinning your wheels and in indecision, you know, put it on one of those like game spinner wheels and spin and that's your task. Right. Now, that's not the ideal, but that is something that if you're stuck and can't decide, go with that. Um, share your list with somebody else and talk it through with them. Sometimes just by doing that, you'll realize what you need to do. The other, um, the, when my executive function is, uh, working at its, uh, you know, ideal capacity, um, using that one thing question, uh, that focusing question, which is what is the one thing that I could do such by doing it would make everything else easier or potentially unnecessary. So thinking about what could you do that will have a sort of downstream domino effect that will make other things easier. Um, that's typically where I would start. Um, you know, it's, I know we have this tendency to respond to the fires, but the problem is our brain is a lot of false alarms for fires. Um, so I think it's usually helpful for us to sort of ignore those alarms. Thank you for answering that because you gave me time to think and I totally changed my answer and perspective on the question. Um, <laughs> you are living through a global traumatic <laughs> event. And the reason you're doing seemingly unimportant tasks right now is because you're living through a global traumatic event. And you don't have to be productive and you don't have to do the thing. You might need to just sit down and color. And that is okay. That is self-care. Self-care counts. There's no such thing as an unmeaningful task. So if you feel like you're doing something that's not meaningful, it probably means you need to recover. And that task actually is meaningful in your recovery. It just might not be the most effective manner of recovery. MJ is super popular in the chat right now. So I feel like we should hook her up with having one of her questions read. Um, I bet MJ will be willing to, uh, to come on live. All right, we're going to allow MJ to talk. Hello, MJ. Hello, hello. Um, so uh, my question out of my own curiosity is because you have families, um, how are you all navigating food and nutrition at home? Because now there's no school lunches. You're not packing those lunches or anything like that. So I'm wondering how that's impacting you at home. Um, and I feel like that would add value to people in the chat who do have families and aren't packing those lunches and stuff anymore. I just want to say how kind it is that MJ asked this question because she doesn't even have kids. She's just, she's asking, she's the voice of others. Oh, that was very kind of you. Yeah. I'm just very curious. Well, um, we actually had a, a conversation about this this morning in our alumni session and talking about um, how it is been challenging getting the foods that I'm uh that we typically get and I've been doing a lot of the ordering stuff online but a lot of the stuff I can't always get um and so it's been challenging so I've had to look at different ways of thinking about how I'm ordering food and ordering larger supplies and quantities of certain things and having to sort of accept that there may be days where I'm not going to get to have my like fresh raw vegetables that I eat almost every day for lunch. Um, and it's frustrating, but, um, I think acceptance around it and, and figuring out ways to adapt is, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The other strategy is just getting frustrated and that doesn't help. Cause I'm not going to stores. I'm, I'm avoiding stores. Fair enough. What about you guys? This morning, my Kids, at, I was making breakfast and like, what do you want? And I went one that asked for macaroni and cheese and cantaloupe and the other asked for chips and salsa. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best breakfast ever. <laughs> I was just like, well, I guess this is what we're doing. Uh, and we're out of, out of salsa. So instead he ate graham crackers and guacamole. Together? 
<laughs> it's his one of his favorites, but <laughs> your kid rules. Well, I think you rule for allowing that to happen. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's a lot about, yeah, just accept, be like, okay, we're just going to roll with this. We're going to let these things happen. Um, and being like, this is not forever. Uh, giving some, a big thing for like packing, since we're not doing pack, like we're like, okay, my wife's like, okay, we're just going to do like a soup and sandwich for lunch every day, you know, and that'll just be what we do uh, come lunchtime. And that's really helpful to just kind of have like kind of a little bit of structure of how we're going to be doing lunches. Deli meat freezes. So mm-hmm. if you can go get like a ton of deli meat and just throw it in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Brandon, what about you? Uh, I was at the store earlier today, so I am not one to avoid the store. I go probably every two weeks when we run out of milk, I'm okay. off to the store. Um, and I have learned I, for a little while there, I was like, I don't know, guys, figure it out. And that, that that is not a good plan because as they figure it out, they don't eat the best food in terms of choices. And that has played out emotionally for them. So I'm changing the plan and I am making more of an effort. And so is my wife as well, depending on who's available when to make them lunch, like cut up the apples, make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, make them breakfast, that kind of stuff. One thing that has not changed is every Sunday I make a ton of pancakes, like a crazy amount of pancakes. The only difference is now I make like two batches instead of one batch. So it's a double crazy amount. And I was doing it before. So I had, pan- cause you can stick them in the fridge and then there's pancakes for the rest of the week. And I didn't have huh. to think about breakfast. Right. Um, and I make like unnecessarily complicated pancakes. Like, like I put, pr- I, my pancakes are made by whatever pan, good quality pancake mix I can find. Like, either Trader Joe's or there's like a Kodiak, Kodiak yeah. protein thing. Yep. So that, and uh, so it's got like eggs and milk and stuff in it. I don't use water. I use milk. Um, and then I add in oatmeal a little bit and I add in um, flaxseed, flax, not flax seeds, but flax, like ground flax um, and pro- vanilla flavored protein powder and chocolate chips because the chocolate chips get them to eat it. <laughs> and it also like there's some fat in there to kind of yeah. make them feel full. So my pancakes are like no joke pancakes. <laughs> If I could, I would put berries in them, but my kids aren't going to eat them with berries in them. So that's for me. Um, But like each pancake is kind of a meal all by itself. (laughs) Um, And then we just throw them in the fridge and they kind of eat the pancakes as they go through the day a little bit now. But that's that means they're not eating other stuff. So um, but it gives it covers breakfast, lunch is covered. And then my wife makes a meal in later on. That is a great idea. Yeah, my guys are 11 for the people who are asking. And Kodiak makes these frozen waffles that I like, the, the high protein waffles. Mm-hmm. But they, I don't know if they discontinued it or I just can't get it anywhere in my area, but the dark chocolate, like they broke my heart because I loved that waffle and I can't find it anywhere. And so I was thinking maybe I can get the the, the mix and make my own mm-hmm. dark chocolate ones. Yep. EJ's has got, they don't have flour, but they have Kodiak pancake mix, Kodiak high protein powder. Can't pancake mix. It's great, great tip. We've been doing that for like two years and it's just now there's just more of them. And I think also, I mean, I'm, I am someone who with my food, I don't have a lot of variety in my food, but that's because I have digestive issues. And so like I stick to what I know I can eat. Um, and so there's a freedom in that. And so I would encourage people to just maybe accept that you're not going to have as much variety and just get more of the stuff that's just easy. Um, go for easy. And and also like if you've got kids that you're trying to expand their horizons a little bit, like buy some weird stuff and just tell them, be like, this is what they had, guys. Yep. We're totally sort of stuck agreed. with this, and and maybe you can expand their horizons a little bit just to try it, just as like, like uh, we're graham stuck. crackers and guacamole, graham crackers and guacamole. Yeah, I mean, and a great way to get them to ex- explore things too is just be like, try new foods. Just be like, explore the food, smell it, touch it describe it before you actually have to put it in your mouth and be like, you don't even actually have to put it in your mouth. Just. Mm -hmm. uh, The best part about that is right now with COVID-19, no one's going to see you listening to your pancake, (laughs) but yeah, but you can tell them, okay. Hey, if you slap that on the table, what sound does it make? Kids are going to be interested in that kind of stuff. And it makes them interested in the food. Um, And, and circling back real quick to something I just noticed in the comments, there's a, uh, Sarah's got a really good point that right now, anybody with a history of food insecurity, 
and, and, or attachment trauma stuff in that area, yeah. this is going to be a time that's hard for them. And, and we should validate that. Absolutely. And I was actually feeling, you know, it's, it's nowhere near what, what people who do have regular food insecurity uh, go right. through, but it definitely has given me a lot of empathy for that experience, not being able to get uh, certain things that I'm used to having in my, my diet every day. All right, let's take a uh, really quick break and let's come back and try to answer some more of these questions. We will be right back. This podcast is brought to you by our patrons over at patreon.com slash ADHD rewired. Did you know that if you become a patron at the $25 a month level, you can join me and a small group of other patrons for an hour of coaching once a month? Coaching with me and some of your peers once a month is a great way to get some coaching, especially if you're unable to invest in our coaching and accountability groups. Our next group coaching call is on Tuesday, May 26th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And I really want to thank all of the patrons who help cover the costs of this podcast. Last month, it cost me over $700 just for the production and editing costs of this podcast alone. I really do appreciate all of you who are listening, who are able to financially support ADHD Rewired. Even a few bucks makes a big difference. Sean S. made a big difference this week. He joined us at the $10 a month level. And at that level, he'll be able to hear the audio from some of our patron-only coaching calls. Thank you so much for your support. And if you can't financially give right now, especially right now, if you've lost your job or if you've been furloughed, please don't worry about contributing anything right now. And also, if you are a patron and your financial situation has changed due to COVID-19, if you need to decrease your pledge or pause your contribution until things pick up, please don't hesitate to do so. Take care of what you need to do. Ratings and reviews on Apple Podcasts and sharing the podcast are other great non-monetary ways you can show your support for ADHD Rewired. All of your support is appreciated. If you can give a dollar, 10 or 100 or more, thank you for showing your support to ADHD Rewired. To become a patron, go to ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. That's ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. And thanks. Have you had the chance yet to listen to this week's episode of Hacking Your ADHD? Go to your favorite podcast player, the one you're probably listening to this one on, and download the next episode, How to Think. Critically, the host, Will Kerb, will talk about thinking through problems and providing some methods to do just that. Check out Hacking Your ADHD with Will Kerb this week and every Monday. Join Will as he explores ways that you can work with your ADHD brain to do more of the things that you want to do. Subscribe to these short, mindful ways to hack your ADHD. Go to HackingYourADHD.com for show notes and to subscribe. And every Friday, check out ADHD Essentials with Brendan Mahan. At ADHD Essentials, they help families develop the skills and knowledge needed to better manage ADHD. Go to ADHDessentials.com to learn more. Both Hacking Your ADHD and ADHD Essentials are both part of the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Available to everyone, everywhere you consume podcasts. If you are listening to this the day it came out, then you can join us today for our live Q&A at 1230 p.m. Central Time. Join me, Brendan Mahan from ADHD Essentials and Will Kerb, host of Hacking Your ADHD, and we'll be answering your questions live. We do this every second Tuesday of the month at 1030 a.m. Pacific, 130 p.m. Eastern. Join us for an hour of live Q&A. Register at ADHDrewired.com slash events so you can join us on our Zoom webinar where we do our live Q&A or like the ADHD Rewired Facebook page and get notified when we go live because we do stream these live even though it didn't actually work last month. We had some technical difficulties. Difficulties. So the best way to catch the live Q&A and to be there with us live is to register. Go to ADHDrewired.com slash events. That's ADHDrewired.com slash events. Hope to see you there. All right. Next question. And uh, MJ, do you, do you want to stick around 
uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be kicking around for a while. I've talked to MJ previously about uh, coming on and potentially helping us host one of these these uh, Q and A's. So uh, here's your um, here's your trail run, MJ. Don't screw it up, whatever you do. <laughs> 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 Let's do another question. Da, 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 da. How do I build consistency? It's like a clean, fresh page every time I wake up. This podcast is brought to you by ADHD. I mean, that is cons- inconsistency is one of the hallmarks of ADHD. The thing like I look at consistency as a byproduct, not a goal. Um, we are going to be inconsistent. What we don't need to do is when we have fallen out of the good habits of the good behaviors, routines, we don't need to beat ourselves up when we're down, get back up. You know, it's, and I, I don't want to say just get back up because I get it. There's a lot of shame when we are stuck in the, the, oh man, I was doing the thing so well and now I'm off my, you know, whatever, fill in the blank here. Um, getting back up, if you look at it just over time, you will be more consistent over time if you spend less time beating yourself up when you've kind of fallen out of the habit. Um, the other things are, are things that just support brain health, you know, things like sleep, exercise, um, getting out in nature, um, good food, social connection. <laughs> also, um, if you write things down, you won't have a clean, fresh page every time you wake up because you will have written things sent down on the page. So keep a journal, right? Do something that this is what I did today so that you start to feel like you get credit for what you did. You start to feel that momentum build a little bit. In my house, because we're navigating the boys being home and what does that mean? I have a whole schedule that I created for them. And it's the, it's like a cool doodad where there's like a pocket thing that hangs down it's like six feet high with little pockets on it and i can move placards into each pocket to set the schedule like 9 a.m we do this 10 a.m we do that all the way down to 6 p.m um and i can erase them and change them and all this stuff but having that schedule posted means it's written down and we maintain the consistency of it i know because at first i had that schedule on the door to our guest room not that we have a big house but we have one extra bedroom and it was working. And then my wife started working from home and the door opened and I didn't see it anymore. And everything flew off the handles <laughs> and it didn't work because I didn't see it. So for a whole week, it fell apart. And then I just moved it to a spot where I'd see it more often. And I was consistent for a week and a half and I didn't mess up until today. But that was because I had to go shopping and it was weighing big in my mind, I guess. But have a schedule you can see and then write down what you did. With, with my guys, what we're doing is starting today or yesterday is we're keeping a record of something that they made, something that they practiced, and something that they learned. They have to write down three things picking from any of those categories just to have them feel that momentum. So I made a mess. I practiced, um, I practiced self-compassion and I learned that I really need to get back to my exercise routine. There you go. That counts. Yeah. And make a checklist if you want for routines and stuff. That's a great way to write it down and to be like, don't assume that you're going to remember the things that you want to do in your routine. All right, let's try to uh, fly through a couple more and then we're going to wrap this one up. Um, Someone needs to address the stress caused by not having enough work to do. This is very hard to deal with and hard to admit in the work environment. Discuss how organizations could help their employees deal with this. That's a really good question. Can my can my brain organize a thought around uh, around this? Depends on where where the perspective we're taking. I can't tell if this is a, I'm a worker or I'm part of leadership in the organization. For leadership, uh, check ins check ins is one thing. Make it clear to your employees that they are not expected to do eight hours of work because that's insanity. It's okay if you're only doing three or four hours of work a day, and you just have to let them because we are living through a global pandemic. It's a traumatizing event. You don't want them to try to work for eight hours a day. You want to give them time to recover and they need it. And they probably have kids too, which is even harder. So step one on the leadership side is practice leadership and give your employees some space at home. I like it. On the, then comes the, you work from home stuff, right? Um, 
if your boss is not being transparent about what their expectations are, do what you can do. Your boss is not being transparent. If you're feeling uncertain about that, ask the question. You just ask, just what should I be doing? This is what I am doing. Am I heading in the right direction? What would you like me to do? A lot of people are afraid to ask that question because they're like, well, that might mean I get fired because my boss sees that I'm not doing things or doesn't think that I know what I'm supposed to be doing or something like that. Um, if your company is in dire straits financially, they're going to let you go regardless. And if you're being proactive around what to do for your boss, what you're saying to them is, I value my job here and I value being a contributor to this job, to this company. So please help me contribute more effectively. That's not going to get you fired, even though it feels like a scary question to ask. Just ask it. And admittedly, you should frame it around, I'm doing X, Y, and Z. Am I heading in the right direction as opposed to, I don't know what to do. Because if you roll in and you're like, I got nothing, what should I do? That might look bad. But if you can say what you're doing and then ask if that's a, if you're going the right way, you'll be in better, better off. Not that I've been thinking about this stuff a lot because my wife got a new job two weeks ago. Could she, but she did and that, that's true. All right, let's, um, let's see if we can answer just a couple more and then we're going to wrap this one up. Um, let's look at Cheryl's question. Uh, my issue is when people speak too fast or don't speak with specificity. I ask them to repeat the question. At times, they repeat the same words, and I just zone out or I feel confused on what they are saying. Then they get impatient when I ask them to repeat it uh, with more clarity. I think I have an auditory processing disorder. I've never been diagnosed for that, and when I was tested by a doctor for ADHD. Uh, and they said they are not ruling it out. Well, I know this is something that, that, um, can be very challenging. It's something that, uh, um, I definitely unmedicated very much relate to. Um, like the whole like Charlie Brown, like want, 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 like when I'm not medicated and I'm just like not on my game, like that's sometimes how it feels when someone's talking to me. Like, I know those are words coming out of your mouth. I just have no idea what you just said. Um, so, you know, with any, you know, we want to make sure that we are identifying the correct problem. So I think that looking at, uh, um, continuing to get, uh, going down that evaluation and diagnostic process towards uh, an auditory processing disorder would be a really um, wise next step. Anything to add or should we go to another question? Uh, just two things. Yeah, I've definitely found listening to people repeat something. My brain's like, I'm just going to pick up on the part that I didn't hear before. And then I missed that part. Uh, so things that can help with that are asking them to say it in a different way. Uh, or instead of just repeating it or having like a fidget where the, your brain is kind of doing the playing with it for a little bit while they're talking so that you can keep focused on, on what they're actually saying. I also like to say, I feel like I missed something. Are you saying, and then I restate what I got. And that's something you can practice with, with people that, that skill in particular. MJ, what, what are your thoughts? Um, well, I was just thinking about, um, how I used to be kind of the front face of the company that I used to work for. And that's definitely something that I had struggled with. And I found um, before medication, it was hard to focus on even just a client asking me a question because I was so focused on looking like I was engaged with them. Whereas if I looked away and did something else, then I could actually process what they were saying. I don't know if that's a thing, but it's something about having to appear engaged that was more distracting and took away from what somebody is asking of me. If that makes any sense. I don't know if anybody can relate to that, but Oh, it's a tough one yeah. to navigate. Thanks, Jay. No problem. All right. Let's, uh, I think we have time for like one more. Yeah, I got you. Do you have any advice to parents who are struggling to figure out distance learning for their kids while also trying to come to terms with all that is going on both globally and in our own homes? My husband and I are both now expected to teach from home. He seems to be doing well with it. He doesn't have ADHD, but I'm having a really tough time. 
what would be the top three things that might help families during this time? I didn't know this was going to be the one that is so deep in my wheelhouse. It's ridiculous. I just grabbed it and started reading. Um, step one, your kids are not expected to progress academically during this crisis. It's about maintaining skills, not gaining new ones. Now, lots of parents don't care about that. And they're like, too bad. My kids are going to gain new skills. And if that's you, fine. But prioritize relationships over the plan. If your kid is struggling to get the homework done, the homework doesn't matter. You are locked in your house with your husband and your wife and your child and your whoever else for the next, I don't know how many months. If you don't prioritize relationships over productivity, things are going to go south in a hurry. Prioritize relationships over everything else. In terms of taking care of your kids and their schools, the teachers are on it. A lot of like teachers are doing a phenomenal job with this stuff. They're really trying to shift over to distance learning as effectively as they can. But even the teachers are saying it's about maintenance. It's not about growth. So let them maintain. In terms of teaching from home, make as much of it a game and fun as you can. Baking is math. Mad libs is language arts. Play board games. Play Dungeons and Dragons. It's full of critical thinking and problem solving skills. Engage in stuff that is fun and entertaining and do that as much as possible. If your kids are all set with sitting in front of the iPad and filling in worksheets, don't make them do it anymore. And if you can't be on top of them, you don't have time in the moment to play those games and do that thing. Let them go watch like a documentary on the television. There's lots of really cool stuff out there that's still educational. It's, it's like summer vacation started early, only we're trying to supplement education a little bit while we do it. And that's okay. Everybody is just a, having a geeky summer vacation right now. Also sign up for the ADHD Essentials for my <laughs> coaching groups. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, check out that YouTube video because I go deep on this as part of that. Brendan, do you have a uh, personally and will do you personally have a um, a goal for where you want to be next month? Like, how, not necessarily an action oriented goal, but just uh, more of a a state of mind goal. How do you how do you want to be and feel this time next month? I want to feel more in control of what I'm eating. Like it was very easy at the beginning to do a lot of stress baking. Uh, and then, you know, there was Easter candy and my daughter's birthday. So there's all sorts of junk food around the house. And so I'm like, yeah, I can kind of see myself like, okay, let's work on setting up more strategies, not to be like, you know, going on a, like, I'm going to be, in ultimate, just you know, make sure I'm eating more vegetables and having you know, I mean, part of that, I've uh, I'm taking a break from caffeine now because I don't actually need because it's affecting my sleep because I was relying on it too much. Is mm. Mainly why. All right, so more vegetables, some more guacamole, less graham crackers. Um, <laughs> it's sweet that goes into like savory. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, I don't really have a goal for next month because I'm built for this. Like I'm built for this. This is all of my, my entire skill set is designed to handle what is happening right now. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional, but all the other stuff, the family stuff, the like, Hey, Brendan, it's a period of crisis. We need leaders. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's my jam. I've read a ton of superhero comics, dude. Like this is my jam. We're in a crisis. It's time to step up. So that's, and it just means that I operate at 85 to 90% executive function power for most of the day. And then at some point I crash and I go down to like 10 and that's okay. That's, that's, that's where it has to be right now. So uh, my goal for the coming months, not just this month, cause I'm not going month to month is to lead and to help as many people as I can get through this situation as effectively as I can while prioritizing my family above everybody else. Because if I'm telling everyone that they need to be doing right by their family and I'm trying to guide them in doing that, but I'm falling down on my family while I'm guiding everyone else, I'm not doing it right because I'm not living my values. So there's a little bit of stepping back from everybody else while also trying to lead the thousands of people who listen to the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network and care about the family side of stuff as much as I can. 
I don't think I have anything to add uh, to that. My brain was going in 35 different places while you were just talking, and the squirrel came back to say hello. Um, <laughs> so um, I think with that, um, I guess where I would like to be at this point next month is um, just be doing a little bit better than I am right now. That's that's all. I mean, it's not very specific, um, but it's something that I think I will be able to to um, accurately assess um, as I've been trying to track kind of how I'm how I'm doing. Uh, and um, thank goodness for having a good therapist. Word. So thank you, Brendan. Thank you, Will. Thank you, MJ. Uh, and for everyone else who uh, who asked questions and for being here, part of the community, we. Uh, we so appreciate you. I so appreciate you. And, um, you know, I think I, I had this as a quote in my very first podcast. And I think it is, uh, still a very, um, probably right now more important than ever. Always do your best to know that your best is going to be different every day. We'll see you next month. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find summaries and additional resources for each episode. You can apply to our free and secret Facebook community. You can learn more about ADHD Rewired's intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups and sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content you won't get anywhere else. It's all at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click the Patreon button. If you're a regular listener and you're still listening to my voice, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron through our Patreon page. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to listeners, but it is not free to produce. And patrons get really cool perks. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tibbers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tibbers. You can also subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube. And you can subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube and see select interviews and some other videos I've posted. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends and your family and your clients, as well as your coaches, therapists, and doctors. And if you're a coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader, and you would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at my website, ADHDrewired.com. And if you're a member of Chad or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this podcast. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. You know, you might be the person that turns somebody on to a podcast for the very first time. And if you really love this episode, please consider hitting share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I count on you to help me spread the message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and to help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts, uh, Stitcher, or any other podcast app that accepts ratings and reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe on this podcast on your podcast app so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Not sure where to start? In no particular order. Check out Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. 10% Happier and Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics. These are both by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions and Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Vaden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. Do you have trouble asking for help? Listen to The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. It's one of the best produced audiobooks I've ever heard. If you're looking for something a little bit more say, magical, I unexpectedly fell in love with the Harry Potter series. 
And I don't usually listen to those kinds of books. And I loved it. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus yet, check out Brene Brown's books, starting with The Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, The Power of Vulnerability, And if you're an entrepreneur or a leader in any capacity, check out her 2018 book, Dare to Lead. And Brene still is my most wanted guest. So if you know Brene, you would be so kind to make that connection for me. I would be really, really grateful. You know who else I would like to have on the show? You. Click the podcast tab at ADHDrewired.com and then click the Be a Guest button at the top of that page and schedule a 15-minute pre-interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, keep growing, and keep connecting. Self-care is not selfish, and no matter what gets done or doesn't get done, at the end of the day, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.